So a vector may be multiplied or divided by a scalar c. If a real number c is multiplied to a vector v, then the resulting vector d is the scalar multiple of v, d equals cv. That is, vector d is parallel to v and its magnitude is a multiple of the magnitude of v. Okay, that's a lot of words, but what is it really saying? Well, what this is saying is this is saying we are allowed to take a scalar and multiply it to a vector. So when a vector is multiplied or divided by a scalar, what happens is we take that scalar and we're really multiplying it to both components of a vector. So let's see that at work. Let's say we have, once again, our illustrious vector A. So here, vector A has the components of 1, 1. I'm sorry, 2, 2. Let's say we want to multiply vector A by... Hmm, how much do you want to multiply it by? We'll say we will multiply it by three units. So we will say we have a scalar C equal to three. So we are going to take the scalar C, multiply it to vector A. So when you multiply a scalar to a vector, you're really multiplying that scalar to each component of the vector, to the first component of the vector and the second component of the vector. So for us, this is 3 times 2 for the x component, and then 3 times 2 for the y component. So when all is said and done, we have a new vector that has an x component of 6 and a y component of 6. Let's call this new vector vector d. And vector d is formed from, again, the multiplication of scalar c to vector a. So let's see what this did to our vector. So I am going to superimpose vector d onto the same coordinate system as vector a. So vector C has components of 6 along the x-axis, so I'll come out 6 units, and 6 along the y-axis, so I'll go up 6 units. So that puts us right here. So let's connect these. And notice something about those two vectors. Notice that those two vectors are parallel to each other. See that there? They lie along the exact same line. The only difference between those two vectors is vector D is three times longer than vector A. So, so if we count it those boxes, okay, one, two diagonals for vector A, and one, two, three, four, five, six diagonals for vector D, vector A is three times longer, I'm sorry, vector D is three times longer than vector A. And that makes sense, though, because we multiplied vector A by three units. So in essence, we stretched vector A by three units, and we ended up with a new vector that is parallel to vector A. So what this means is anytime you take a scalar multiple of a vector, that vector is always parallel to the original vector you started off with. So what you also saw here is that this scalar multiplication lengthened our vector. 
Now, if our scalar was a number between 0 to 1, you would have seen that the vector would have shrank. Or if our scalar was a negative number, let's say, and let's just do that. Let's say our scalar, let's try a number, another scalar. So let's say we had a scalar quantity b, and let's say b is equal to minus 1 half, and let's say vector f is going to be equal to vector b, I'm sorry, to scalar b times vector a. So let's work this out. Vector f is going to be scalar b, scalar b is minus 1 half, times vector a. Now what I predict here is that vector f will be shorter than vector a by 1 half. Since, since the scalar is 1 half in magnitude, this scalar multiplication is going to shorten vector a. And because of the minus sign, I'm going to predict that vector f is going to be opposite to the direction of vector a. So let's just see that by finishing our calculation. Vector f is equal to minus 1 half times 2, minus 1 half times 2. Vector f is a new vector that is, has a x component of minus 1, and a y component of minus 1. So let's look at vector f. So vector f, x component of minus 1, y component of minus 1. So that's a tiny teensy weensy vector. Here is vector f. Now notice once again that vector f is opposite the direction to vector a. It's flipped 180 degrees. And the other thing about vector f is it is also shorter than vector a. It's, in fact, it's half the length of vector a. And that makes sense because we multiplied vector a by the scalar minus 1 half. The minus sign flipped the direction. The fact that 1 half is a number between 0 and 1 shortened vector a. So we could say scalar multiplication lengthens or shortens a vector depending on whether the value is multiplied or we have a fractional value. And the orientation of the multiplied vector remains the same unless it's a minus. It's a negative number. If it's a negative number, then it flips it by 180 degrees. So this is what you see here. Scalar C can be thought of as having the effect of stretching, shortening, or rotating a vector by 180 degrees. Here, 2V, since our scalar is greater than 1, it doubles the length of the vector. Here, since our scalar is 1 half of the original vector, or since our scalar is 1 half, that's a number between 0 and 1, it shortens vector V. And here, since our scalar is equal to minus 1 half, minus 1 half is a number between 0 and negative 1. So this will both shorten the vector and uh, switch its orientation by 180 degrees. So let's do an example. Determine whether vector b with components minus 3 halves and 1 is parallel to vector a with components of 3 comma n minus 2. Take a couple of minutes to answer this question by pausing the video. And once you answer the question, you could link you could find the link in which I solve this problem.